Welcome back to another episode. Today we're doing something totally different. I'm joined by my girlfriend Natalie and I'm going to be looking at her little project that she's been running out of our house during the most of lockdown I would say and it's called Cakes for a Cause. Cakes for a Cause is a charitable baking business. Um, so I essentially sell baked goods um, and all of the profits that I make from that get donated to a different good cause. So the good cause changes kind of every month or so. Um, and they're all local projects or charities in this area. So people from the community buy the products and then the money goes back out into the community. We're gonna be making your best seller. Yes. Best seller. One of my best sellers. Peanut butter chocolate chunk cookies. Um, they are one of the best sellers along with original chocolate chunk cookies. They're really easy to make. Um, they're really easy to store. So I can make a whole big batch and then if I don't sell them all in a weekend, I can just freeze them and keep them for the next weekend. What was your first cause and how did it come about? So the first cause that I helped was um, a lady who had a cat and her cat had, had two kittens. Um, and in Belize there's a real problem with people not spaying and neutering their pets which is why there are a lot of stray cats and dogs on the streets which is something that we found out about through working with the local Humane Society. Um, this lady was aware of the need to spay and neuter but just didn't have the funds to do it. Um, I saw her posting on Facebook and I kind of thought well it's a hundred dollars maybe less for a spay like I could just pay for that but to just pay for one spay doesn't really do that much it's not very sustainable um, which is when um, John and I were talking and it was we sort of had a conversation of well what if I sell some baked goods and then I use the profits um, to pay for that rather than just throwing my own money into it so to start with it's peanut butter a mix of melted butter and shortening. If you're at home in the UK, you probably have butter, so choose butter. Cool, let's mix it up. And then to that, you add the sugar, um, which is like one third white sugar, two thirds brown sugar. And then you mix it again. Two whole eggs and one egg yolk. And also a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Pro tip from a guy who knew nothing about baking, a teaspoon is not what you use for a cup of tea. It's actually a real measurement. So get yourself a little ingredient for that. I'm just telling people because... Yeah, in case they're like you. Again. So the next step is to sieve flour, baking powder, bicarbonate of soda, and a little bit of salt into the mixture. Does it matter which flour you're using? Um, this is plain flour, and it does matter because you're adding the baking powder and the bicarbonate of soda to it. Um, if you use a self-raising flour, um, they will just puff up and go too cakey. So for this, uh, you don't need to use the electric mixer, you just can fold it in with a spoon or a spatula, which is what I'm using. All the cookies I make are like extra chocolatey, um, so these have a mix of milk and dark chocolate chunks. Done? Done. Done. Ready to chill. Ready to chill. You wrap up the dough in cling film and chill it for at least 24 hours. How did you kind of come up with the pricing, advertising, and all of that? Where's that come into it? So the pricing, um, each cookie I make um, costs around about 50 cents to make, something like that. So what I did was I set up a spreadsheet, I input the costs of all the ingredients, um, added in the recipes, calculated how much it was per cookie, and then just looked at what would be a reasonable price in this area to sell for. So from a, a 50 cent cost to make, I sell for 150 each or four for five dollars. Um, which is what most people buy. So that's like a $3 profit on four cookies. Um, so it's all calculated so I know exactly how much is profit. So I keep enough to cover my own costs. So I cover the ingredient costs and then everything else is what goes to the good cause. And then in terms of marketing, here in Belize particularly, like everyone sells everything on Facebook. Um, the buy and sell groups are massive. So I just started out there. Uh, I posted in a couple of the local buy and sell groups just with some photos of the cookies. Then I set up my own dedicated page. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's gone quite well. It's grown fairly quickly, quicker than I expected. And on most weekends, if we advertise that we're selling stuff, then we'll get some orders coming in. Have you got any kind of top tips you'd give for somebody who wants to try out this recipe? Is there anything else that they should know about to get their cookies that 
that extra bit special? Extra bit special. Um, well, um, all about precision. So I weigh every ball of dough to make sure that every cookie is exactly the same. Um, and then to get the sort of crinkle top, so I don't know if you can see, like it's got that really nice crinkle on top. Um, my top tip is when it's part way through cooking, like maybe 10 minutes through cooking, you take the pan out and you just like bang it on the side and it helps the cookie to spread and it gives it the crack on top, which is um, very pleasing. I am known for my prowess, different recipes, but not known for my baking ability, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna myth bust that today. I'm gonna give you a nice little recipe you can use. We've recently got a dog that we're fostering. Yes. Little buddy. And I'll cut to a clip of him now. And this guy I know wants those treats. He's after the cookies, but we can't give him them. So I'm gonna to pitch to the idea of cakes for a pause. Okay. Pause for a cause. Whichever you prefer, but I think mm -hmm. I'll bang it onto your menu. You can try it out, see how it sells, see if it raises any money, and we'll get some money donated to um, some local animals. I think that's what we'll do. So I'm going to give you a little recipe here, super simple, dead easy to do for some peanut butter dog treats. The types of causes I've purposely tried to go quite varied, so it's not all animal causes. Um, so we did um, the cat spay. Um, we helped a local charity called Belize Bird Rescue and they were fundraising for a new truck um, because they can't carry out their rescues uh, or vet visits without a truck. So that was one where it was a cash donation. Um, but then what I, I really like to do is um, donate something where you can actually see what it is so you can see exactly where it's going. So for example, just before Christmas, um, we partnered with a local person who was organizing a Christmas toy drive. So they were um, collecting donations of toys to give out in some of the less well-off communities around here. So we fundraised then, looked at how much profits and just went out and bought stuffed toys, books, games, like things like that to, um, to give out to the kids. The thing I love about this, like coming from a, like a teaching background is, you know, young kind of 12, 13 year old wannabe entrepreneurs could viably set this up as a little side business for themselves. They could go out, mm -hmm. they could pick up a recipe like this one, ask the parents for five pounds to get them going and see how far they could take it. Yep. Um, the Facebook groups is obviously one way they're selling about it, but even just by kind of putting out a little stall on the street or, or anything like that, you know, supervised sort of conditions depending on what the restrictions are and everything else. There's a lot of scope for how you can take a simple idea like this and teach more than just baking with it. Um, what, what's your kind of criteria for what causes you will kind of go towards and, and what you don't go towards? Um, so I guess the things I look for is I want it to be local um, because it's all about supporting local causes. Um, and I want it to be something where I know that a small donation will actually make a difference because we're not selling hundreds of cookies every day. Like it, it's a relatively low, low donation amount. But by looking for like maybe slightly smaller causes rather than big charities, um, you can really see that the money is going to something good and you know that it's really appreciated. We've got flour and baking powder. We got one egg, lob that in. Bit of honey, something you don't have in yours. No honey. So you make it rich and expensive. And is honey suitable for dogs? Absolutely. All of this is perfectly dog friendly. Don't go blaming me if they get sick. Give them a little bit first. Test them out on that. If that goes down nice, snap those babies up. So we've got the peanut butter. This is the showstopper for this piece. A lot of it going in there. A cup full. Again, a cup is another different, that's a fixed measurement, people. Anything else? Yeah, a bit of water. Water. That's one cup in a mug. So the ingredient that you need to look out for um, in the peanut butter is xylitol, which um, I think is an artificial sweetener. Um, and I think essentially it can cause upset stomach and dog. The current charity that I'm working with is HelpAge Balmapan, uh, which is a branch of HelpAge Belize and HelpAge International. Um, so they work with elderly people in the local communities here and they actually have a community centre which is like literally a two minute walk from our house. Um, so they've not been able to hold their usual um, events that they do because of the 
pandemic restrictions that have been happening here, but they are gearing up to do that again soon. So what the money I'm raising is going to go towards is um, for their board games that they play. Um, they play games like bingo, um, so we'll be supplying some prizes for that. And the prizes are things which are actually useful items to people. They're not what you'd call luxury items. Um, most of the people that are helped by the charity are not so well off, so it will be things like typical groceries, cleaning products, um, things like that. So once we've finished uh, the fundraising, then we'll take some pictures of that so everyone can see on the Facebook page what we've bought for them. Facebook page being? At Cakes for a Cause Belize. I'm just gonna flower this surface. It's a light flowering nap. <laughs> I'm just gonna, there we go. That's how you make it light. If you put a bit too much down, even the pros do that occasionally. That's how you make it nice. And we're gonna roll it so it's about half an inch. I'm gonna make a couple of different sizes and then we're gonna put them on a tray. All right, so if I wanna get my, my new cakes, my new cookies, pause for a cause going mm. and get that on the menu, yeah. how, what's the process? What are we doing to get that actually selling and contributing? Okay, so the first step is product testing, which means our buddy is going to have to test out these little cookies for himself and see if they're market ready. If they are, then uh, one of the keys is good photography. Um, there's a thing where people will use stock photography a lot um, and then you could be getting absolutely anything because it's not a product they've made themselves. So I think one of the things that actually sets cakes for a cause apart is that we do have real photography and it's a really good quality photography. So we'll do a little pause for cause photo shoot, take some pictures, probably feature Buddy in it. But even if you're at home and you've just got your phone handy, like set the scene up quite nice for you. Your mm -hmm. phone camera is probably more than good enough yep. and able to do it, but just take your time, put the background nice, like clear the plate, make sure it just looks professional even if you haven't got like a really expensive camera or anything, you can still make it look good and it is genuine. And that's, that's a really good tip. Mm -hmm. And then get the message out there. So for here, we'll post on Facebook page. Um, that's the most used social media where you are. It might be something else. It might be Instagram. You might do TikToks, like whatever you think uh, people in your social circles or in your neighborhood um, will connect with is a good place to start advertising. Yeah, and if you're a young person trying to do this as well, like look at your social circle, like ask your friends, ask your family. If you're trying to do something like dog biscuits, then think who do you know who has a dog, speak to their parents, speak to their, their family members and see what you can do. See if you can start your network that way. And then once that word gets out, the word of mouth will start to carry that idea forward. And then find a good cause for your profits to go to. Yeah, like we've chosen to do that. Uh, that's the position that we're in at the moment where we can do that. But your own circumstances might mean that actually this, the, the best cause for you might be to support your own, yourself, your family. This could be a great second earning or a first earning in some cases. We know that COVID's had a massive effect of, of people around the world. And whilst this might not be enough to bring in a full wage, it might be enough to, to get the next meal in or to get one of those goods that you, you might not be able to get. So as much time as you're willing to put into this, you will be able to, to get something back out of it as soon as you start. Yeah, like if I bake cookies every single day and kept the profits, it would be covering all of our food costs quite comfortably. So, um, and that's without you know, a big business. We just sell from home. We don't have a shop front. Um, it's just all word of mouth marketing, really. Okay, well, thanks very much for joining us today. I've really thanks. enjoyed it. And hopefully my little dog biscuits mm. are gonna uh, get added to the menu soon. I think he likes it.